Hello and welcome to this segment on the Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Michelle Stangler, the host of this segment of What's Happening in Agriculture. While you may be seeing large equipment on the roads here soon to using corn stalks and straw in your fall decorations, harvest season is upon us. To tell us more of what we need to know and to provide a more depth look of the upcoming corn and soybean harvest season is farmer Tom Gillis. Hello, welcome. Welcome, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Now first, tell me a bit about your farm. Uh, farm with my older brother and, and myself and some other family members, including my son, helps from time to time. Uh, about 1,800 acres, uh, currently corn and soybeans, uh, former dairy producers from back in the day in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, mostly cash grain now, so no cattle enterprise at all. So Cool. Now, a conversation with any farmer is about the weather. <laughs> How did the weather impact the growing season this year? Well, it, it impacted us. We were probably six inches below normal rainfall during the growing season. Now, the soil has some holding capacity that kind of gets you through some of the bumps and bruises. Uh, the severely lighter soils are going to be drought stressed. There's going to be some variability in the in the yields. We'll probably be 10 to 20 percent below our average production history. So, but still still adequate supplies. It'll it'll be fine. It just isn't as good as maybe we'd are accustomed to in the past with normal weather, and as good as maybe we would expect. So. Now, when you're looking at the harvest season, when is it typically in this area, and how long does it typically take? Well, for, for the cash grain portion, pretty much October 1st is kind of the date that most harvest starts getting rolling. Now, they're already chopping some corn silage for the, for the animal industry this morning. I heard them just south of my house this morning when I left. <laughs> um, that's just getting going. They preferably want the, the milk line of the, of the corn at about half, you know, for whole plant moisture to be the right moisture to feed the cattle rations out. So. So there's a lot of different impactors that really impact when you're going to use those machinery equipment to harvest the corn and soybeans. So to someone who's just driving and seeing that large equipment, what's kind of happening um, and what are they using? Well, the, right now when they're harvesting the corn silage, they'll take almost the whole plant. They'll, they'll cut it maybe six, eight inches above the ground. They'll take in the whole plant and that be, it will ferment, become a sil in silaged product and will be fed probably throughout the year until next year's harvest. Uh, on our farm, we will combine the soybeans probably first, and they'll be you know knee high to thigh high a little better, and we'll take just the, the grain, just the round soybeans, and then the corn as well. We'll combine this corn here and just take this yellow kernel portion for, for the industries later on. Now you had mentioned that drought tolerance was even shown in some of these corn cobs. What do you have here and try to explain it a little bit. Well, I, I kind of just randomly picked this one from what I would call a normal soil area with, you know, maybe above average water holding capacity. And this one I took from a little bit of a ridge of a drought stressed area. And you can see the tip here, the kernels aborted here. They didn't pollinate and they didn't, uh, there just wasn't enough water. To, the, the plant is amazing at regulating itself. It says I have this much water, this much plant food material, nutrients, whatever, to make X amount of grain. And it's just amazing <clears> how it, it, it will regulate itself. And if we were staying dry in, in August, this would have, would re have receded even more yet. So uh, the, probably the key word for harvest this year will be variability. And it'll be all by soil type and, and soil water holding capacity. And when there isn't kernels here on the top that's impacting yield and that's overall impacting how, how much you're going to try to break even this, this harvest season and in that regard? Uh, we'll still be, you know, profitable levels, I, I feel. You know, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't combined it yet, but some of it will, will also be determined by the size of the kernel, the depth of the kernel. Um, you know, there's, it can be 90,000 kernels in a bushel and it can be 70,000 kernels in a bushel. And that's all based on how it fills here uh, the rest of the, you know, the next two to three to four weeks before we actually mechanically harvest it. So that, that will, a little bit of variability in that yet, but. So there are a lot of factors that really impact overall yields, but safety amongst large equipment is so important. Um, so what should drivers and other people know when harvest season is kicking out, kicking off? Well, probably the biggest thing is 
is the speed at which our equipment moves, you know, 25 miles an hour or so. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind when you're coming up on equipment. Um, Wisconsin passed a vast array of implement, implements of husbandry laws, they're called, uh, with lights, uh, you know, flashing lights, whatnot, weights. Um, also remember that all of their equipment weighs a tremendous amount. It's hard to stop it sometimes, you know, quickly. Uh, probably the best word is just patience, you know. I've seen analogies where getting behind a piece of farm equipment for, you know, while they travel to the field is, is really no different than sitting in a red light at a stoplight. So just bear with us. It's, it's one time a year and it's enough food and fiber and fuel to supply for the whole year. So just, you know, one ounce of patience goes a long ways to, to safety and, and remember that it's for everybody. So. And it's really important because um, most of the time it's a family affair. So if something happens, it's one of your own. Absolutely. So it's yep. so key mm -hmm. to be really, yep. really trying to just stay back and to yep. be mindful that it's another person's family member and mm -hmm. just to really, yep. really be cautious right. of it. We want to make sure we all go home and we want to make sure all the consumers go home safely as well. So. And many of the times you have long days. Um, what does your typical day kind of involve during the Oh, we season? try to stay you know, somewhat within the, the, the human nature, 12, <laughs> 12 to 14 hours is a long day. And that's, you know, our, the size of our equipment, the, the drying capacity of our bend sites and, and everything, that, that, that's a full day. So to get, to get the adequate rest that we're able to perform again the next day and, and keep going and, and between weather events and, and whatnot, that, that's a full day. So even looking at a few years back, when I mean, all it did it seem was rain during the harvest season. That really impacted you, leading to probably longer than twelve hour days. Well, if it's raining, you kind of take them days off and maybe <laughs> you know recharge yourself a little bit. But yes, it's it's you have to to dodge the weather events for sure. Soybean harvest is more critical for the rain. You know, let's say it rains some today. If we were in the time frame of harvesting corn already, we could start harvesting corn again tomorrow already. You know, as long as the field conditions would hold us, hold the equipment up. So it doesn't affect the crop moisture so much on rain. Rain will affect the soybean moisture tremendously. Well, if you're just joining in, I'm talking with Tom Gillis. He is a farmer and he has been very active in the industry over the past few years now. You have done a lot over these over these past few years, you know, what's the most enjoyable part to your job? Uh, just explaining to people how it's produced, how safely it's produced, all of the, the modern technologies that we use to produce the, the, the crops that feed the entire world, you might say. You know, the, in the United States, about one and a half percent of the population are farmers, and we feed all 330 million people, plus enough to export about 20 percent of the grain, so uh, that goes to the rest of the world. So. That part of it, you know, oh, I didn't know that, or I didn't know this. You know, that's very rewarding and very satisfying. We're, we're several generations from people that grew up on basically all farms. So as we get into that space, the general public needs to be aware of what we're doing and why we're trying to do it and do it sustainably. And, you know, it's just an important part of, of the process. Now, corn has a lot of applications after you're harvesting it. What are some of those ways that corn is being used? Well, probably 80% of the, of the field corn that we will call it in the United States goes for secondary industries, whether it's pork, the poultry industry, or the cattle industry, obviously. There's a vast array of secondary markets. Obviously, we produce ethanol, and then the co-products of that goes also back into the animal industries. You know, we don't use any of the protein or the crop oil to produce ethanol. So all of that protein comes back into the animal industry rations. And there's a huge part that goes to pharmaceuticals and obviously your breakfast cereals and, and any other pan pantry products you may have in there, you know, look on in the ingredients and there's maybe corn in some form in, in whatever amounts, you know, in those products. So. And even in a pill, like an Advil pill. Yeah, the, the coating on Advil tablets comes from the starch in the corn kernel, so. Now, what do you wish that people would know about the corn industry and maybe even about your job too? Uh, just that we're doing the best we can to produce it sustainably, safely, environmentally. Uh, we can produce the food, fuel, and the fiber for you know vast array of, of consumer products. Um, we have the most abundant, the safest food supply in the world and the cheapest. 
you know, because of our efficiencies and that size of equipment you're talking about going down the road. Um, you know, I've traveled to China in the past. There are more farmers in China than the entire population of the United States, but they're doing it manually. They're harvesting it by hand, usually. They're, you know, it's just not a mechanicalized society yet. So that's part of, you know, maybe appreciate how well we are actually doing our job a little bit, and that doesn't get conveyed as well as maybe it should. So. And you're being good stewards of the land as well. You know, what are some practices that you do on your farm to ensure it's viable for the next generation? Well, multiple. It starts with soil testing. Uh, we've used the GPS systems to grid sample so we can tell it just exactly what one acre of that field may or may not need. Uh, Crazy. The other, the other uh, thing we've done is adopted, the, it's called the 4R systems, the right product, the right time, the right place, and the right amount. So we've split applied some of our plant growing nutrients that helps, you know, you're not overloading the soil all at one time. And if we get a, a adverse weather event, it would leach out some of those products. Uh, just, just a whole multitude of things that, that modern technology has allowed us to do actually. So with these GPS and, and uh, going in between the crops later in the growing season and everything with auto steers and, the, and mapping the, the, the applicators, you can put more on here and less on there. Them are the type of things that have really moved the needle. A lot of different responsibilities day to day that to mm -hmm. keep that soil, to continue it for um, your, maybe your kid down the road. Absolutely, yeah, my son helps some. He, he does work off the farm uh, at a, at a full-time job, but, but he's still very involved, so. A lot of great information here today, um, but number one thing that people watching should know about when harvesting um, this upcoming September and October and November. Uh, back to the safety, just, just, you know, give us a minute. We'll, we'll get out of your way and, and everything will be just fine, so. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Anything else that you'd like to share? No, I think that uh, covers the vast majority of what we need to talk about. So. Well, thank you so much. That was Tom Gillis, farmer who will be up early and late working to provide the many products to you on a daily basis, from ethanol to even uh, a pill that you're taking. It's so important this season to be cautious and safe when driving around farm equipment in the area or throughout the state. I'm Michelle Stangler, the host of this segment of What's Happening in Agriculture on the Western Wisconsin Journal.